Question 21 says that consider two smooth blocks A and B of mass 1 kg each. Among the given situations, the force between blocks will be maximum in. Dear students, if you analyze all the four options, that the option number one is a straightforward correct answer because in this case, the force between A and B does not only support the weight of the B but the force of 2 Newton as well. That is the force will be equal to the weight of B plus 2 Newton. And hence the option number 1 is the correct answer. Now let us solve the question number 22. The question number 22 is a statement based question and it says that which of the following statements is correct. First, the electric field calculated using Gauss's law is only due to the charges which are enclosed inside the Gaussian surface. Dear students, statement 1 is incorrect statement because the electric field which is calculated using the Gauss's law is due to the all the charges whether they are inside or outside the Gaussian surface. Statement 2 or the option 2 states that the Gauss's law is valid for only symmetrical charge distributions. Dear students, this is also an incorrect statement because the Gauss's law is valid for every charge distribution. However, to find out the electric field using Gauss's law, it is possible and convenient for the symmetrical charge distributions only. Statement 3 says that in electrostatic condition, all points on a conductor are equipotential. Dear student, this is a correct statement because the conductor surface and the conductor region in electrostatic condition, that is where the charges are not moving but are at rest, is completely equipotential. Option 4 states, that magnetic flux through a closed surface may be non-zero. This is an incorrect statement because the magnetic flux through a closed surface is zero. This is also another statement of the fact that magnetic monopoles do not exist. Hence for this question option number three is the correct answer. Dear students now let us proceed to the question number 23. Question 23 says five identical resistors marked A, B, C, D and E are connected in a circuit as shown in the figure. The ratio of power dissipated through B to the power dissipated through C is. Dear students, if a current I is flowing through the resistor B, then a current I by 2 and again a current I by 2 would be flowing through C and D. If the power through B is P, it can be written as I square into R, where R is the resistance, the power through C can be written as I by 2 square into R, which clearly is equal to P by 4. And hence, the ratio of the paths between B and C is 4 is to 1, which makes the option number 1 as the correct answer. Now let us solve the next question, which is question number 24. As per question number 24, a proton is moving in a circular orbit of radius r in a transverse uniform magnetic field. If the kinetic energy of proton is made 9 times of its initial value, then the radius will become. Dear students, the radius in such a case is equal to mv by qb, the symbols are having their usual meanings. This can also be written as under root of 2 mk by qb, where k is the kinetic energy. Clearly, the radius is proportional to root of k. And if k is made 9 times, then the new radius will be 3 times of the initial radius. And hence, option number 3 is the correct answer. Now, let us solve question number 25. As per question number 25, a thin metallic rod is rotated about one end in a uniform magnetic field with angular speed 6 radian per second while being connected in a circuit at its one end which slides on a conducting fixed loop as shown in the figure. If the length of the rod is 1 meters, magnetic field is 4 tesla and resistance of bulb is 10 ohms, then the current through the bulb will be. Dear students, in the case of rotating conductor, the induced DMF is equal to B omega by 2 into L square. So this will be the induced EMF in this particular rod and this will be the EMF that will be generated across the bulb as well. It is given that the resistance of the bulb is 10 ohms while the rod is metallic so we can assume that the resistance of the rod is negligible or zero so the current will be equal to e by r that will be equal to 
B omega by 2R into L square. Here B is given to be equal to 4 Tesla, L is given to be equal to 1 meter, omega is given to be 6 radian per second and R is equal to 10 ohms. So substituting the given values, the value of I turns out to be equal to 4 into 6 into 1 square divided by 2 into 10 that will be equal to 1.2 amperes which means option number 3 is the correct answer. Now let us solve question number 26.